destiny for your next level for what is written. What is written is written, but a man had to sign it. But in your destiny, there is a man God put that will execute it. I came as that man. In the multitude of many counsels, that there might be safety, where there is no vision, where there is no vision, the people perish. Still on the characters of the altar, we're going to look at different dimensions, how these things operate without people knowing it. And that's why every now and then we must deploy the help of the Spirit of God to help us navigate through in the affairs of this life, in the affairs of life. Where the enemy can use what you think you already know and still use it and still structure it to deal with you and you become ignorant even in the place of life. Come with me. Show you two scriptures, we start from there. Then we we'll believe God in the next few minutes. We'll be able to deal with this. Um, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Show you two scriptures. Mark chapter 10. Uh, verse 4 to 5. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. And what, to what chapter are you reading? Verse 45. What chapter? Mark 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Read on. And to give his life a ransom for many. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, mm -hmm. and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he called thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. I mean, immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Once again, Heavenly Father, we call upon you. You have invited your people that they may hear the word of life and that they may receive instruction and direction from you to know which way to go and how to navigate through in life and how to work in your glory. And Lord, because your word says that you shall by no means cast away anyone that have come to you. And Lord, I ask by your mercy, let there be no cast away here this morning. Amen including our viewers around the world. Let your word come forth with power. Amen. And let your word break yokes. Amen. Let chains and fetters be broken. Amen. And let the healing power of your word, the deliverance power of your word, the breakthrough and the restoration power of your word, yes. the, holy, the, the, the word that brings holiness and purity, yes. let it come forth. Amen and work in the life of your people. Amen. That once again that I speak as your oracle, yes. that I speak with power, precision, yes. with sound mind, yes. with accuracy, yes. and the spirit of excellence, Amen. touch my tongue again with the call of fire. Yes. And that which you have given and said and revealed and taught in the place of prayer in the secret place, help me to accurately, without my own power, emotions, let me accurately deliver the same to your people Amen. that your name be glorified alone Amen. let sinners come to the kingdom of your dear son jesus do what you alone can do yes and all the glory go to your name Amen. in jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen. let me hear a big and a better amen, amen. please be seated be seated sit in the heavenly places 
above principalities yes and above power yes now listen carefully everybody i want to by the way of introduction when we talk about altars i did explain last sunday what altars are how they operate and how they bring their characters expressing it through human beings and the character they put in you that you don't deliberately deal with by spiritual discipline becomes their stronghold in your life now something interesting here in mark chapter 10 he said and when they came to jericho now again here is a man the blind Bartimaeus. now when i've carefully researched studied and observed i discovered that this uh, this man his father too happens to be a blind man amen somebody amen. now the same character playing out in in his father's life is the same character that played through that's to say the powers that operate does not need to do anything new is anybody hearing me yes sir it does not need to do anything new it comes with the same old structure with the same old way they've been operating and one of the one of the characters of these powers of these forces of darkness is ignorance what do i mean by ignorance now you see some strange things that is synonymous with your family and you know the enemy makes you come to this understanding and conclusion that this thing is the will of god is okay for example you've come from a family where everybody struggles everyone is poor you saw you grew up you saw growing up you saw your father very poor poor as poor your uncles poor poor everyone in the family poor look at the mentality you're growing up the enemy structures the same thing into your life and says there is no way anyone can be rich so even when you fail you just attribute it to well in our family we don't get rich is the same thing is anybody hearing me yes sir ignorance is also the structure the enemy operates with in the place of his character somebody say i hear you i hear you Papa. so you must understand these things how they work so this man was suffering something that is not new but i also want you to see something this encounter happened in jericho it happened in jericho and there is something about jericho that i like you to understand remember if you read joshua chapter 6 from verse number one and up to 25 26 there was an encounter remember how it was that the people of israel were coming out of egypt and they came to jericho and the government of the day the people of jericho refused them entry or a passage through their land in advancement of their cares to getting to the promised land and if you read Joshua chapter 6 and verse number 1, it said, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of Israel, that none, none went out and none came in because of Israel. Embargo. 
Now, the people of Israel were frustrated. I'm trying to show you there is something about Jericho, and many of you have your own Jericho. And as a result of that, why the people were crying, murmuring? Joshua, the one who stepped into the shoes of Moses, came forth and brought word from the Lord. The Lord spoke to Joshua that he should tell the people not to worry, but rather that he should carry out instruction to, that will eliminate destruction. And they came to pass, the Bible told us how they began, you know, to move around the wall of Jer the, the city of Jericho, around as they were commanded. And on the seventh day, how the wall, you know, Jericho came down. And the Bible said, at that time, the man, that in body was Joshua, but in spirit was Moses. In anointing was Moses. In presence was Moses. He said, because of what you have done to us, because of not allowing us a passage, because there is no cause that comes without action. Cause is a product of action or a wrong done to a person or to a people. Yes, sir. So it provokes a curse. Then, why they bent down Jericho? Moses, in the body of Joshua, said, From now on, no man will dare rebuild this city called Jericho. Number two, any man that attempts to rebuild it, we do so at his own expense of, li of losing his two sons, the first and the last one. That's a terrible and a scary cause. That means if you then make a tent, that's why even some people are cursed that if people who are not anointed and have the audacity of the Spirit of God through understanding, and through the secret place of prayer, that's why there are pastors who go to some places for deliverance and, and they die. Yes, sir. You've heard that before? Yes, sir. Because you are going to deal with, number one, what you are not called to do. Number two, what you don't have the covering to deal with. And number three, a personality plays the case that is even stronger and powerful than you that says anybody who attempt to undo this thing, the person himself will be undone. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Papa. I'm trying to raise a foundation and I want you to understand this. Because in this foundation, you get the message clear. So people can go for deliverance. You've seen situations, they say people went for family deliverance and they went here and, and they died. It's true. It's real. Yes, sir. Because you're going to do what you are not called to do. You don't even know the power behind what you are dealing with. So now, there was curse on that land. As a result of that curse, the women in that land were buried. They, be, they, they, they were all buried. Majority of them. The land itself buried. The water burned because of the curse of this man. Years went on, went by again and again. I think about a thousand years later, a man showed up who did not even understand the history. Because it is, it is dangerous for you to deal with what you don't understand. Yes, sir. <laughs> Excuse me. Very dangerous. It's your understanding in life that will make you a standing in your undertaking. Yes, sir. You can go to impose curses and battles because you are dealing in a terrain where you don't understand. Now, many times when the enemies or soldiers go into war with the terror with the terrorists, and you know it's not like something that is declared like a full-blown war. These terrorists, they fight guerrilla warfare. That means 
Jerry, they are not coming out to say we are in war with you. This is where we are located. They come out from time to time, strike, and go back to their hiding place. So it's a guerrilla warfare. They are faceless at the same time. Now, they can plant land, land, land mines. When they plant it, the people going to fight them might not even know. And as soon as they get to the place, the thing explodes and kill them. Sometimes they can kill all the military people because they, they are not aware. If they know, they will not go. So the same thing happened. There are people who ignorantly walk into satanic landmines and it explodes, time bomb, and kills them. You will not, what you don't know will not kill you. That's why you need to walk in wisdom, walk in light. You need to be intelligent as a child of God. You need to every now and then deploy divine intelligence. Now I can tell you this. So one guy rose up, according to 1 Kings chapter number 16, if you read the last verse, I think verse 34, let, let's have it, let's get it projected, or you can quickly read it. A man rose up one day and said, hey, I'm a Jericho light, and I see the desolation of my country, and somehow I've made some money. Now, let me go and rebuild it. There is no problem. Good intention without knowledge will suffer you. Uh. It's not just enough to have good intention. The Bible says in his days that he had a battle light, built Jericho, he laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gate thereof in his, young, in his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. Somebody say, here. I hear you, Papa. Now, now if it were today, somebody is building his community and lost his two sons, what would be the, what would be the report card? What will be the story? Talk to me, somebody. You can be innocent, but because of ignorance, you can walk into what you term to be good works against you. Now, how do you tell me that this man is not involved in some, in some sort of occultism, according to today's people? How do you tell me that this man did not use his two sons for blood money? There is no way. But what happened to him? Joshua said, Probably the man did not read history. He did not understand that there was a curse living in the climb and in the atmosphere of the Jericho light by a man. Because the man who spoke it, his voice is in that atmosphere. And because his voice is there, every time somebody comes there, the voice and the spirit empowers that thing to come to pass. And so in the process, as the man started the foundation, he lost the first son. As he continued with the project, he lost the second son. And that did not Present the community from the curse. The curse was still upon the community because there is a character by a spoken word. Somebody was offended. There are many of you that, that we came from families, families where individuals many years, generations ago, were offended, where people were buried alive and their blood cries and still crying today. You just come and say, In the name of Jesus, I command devil to go. That's not correct. You don't command devil because they are not devil they are human being killed and their spirit is troubling you yes papa preach it sir they are human being killed yes sir there was a conf confrontation one time i think somewhere in southern africa i was praying for a family that were dying at a certain age of 42. no one goes beyond it beyond 42 years and about six to seven of them had already gone. There were eight in total. And the other one was few weeks or months to that age. And then, as I was ministering and prophesying, it was picked up prophetically. Then the Lord made me to see what's going on in their family, how people are dying. He said, yes, man of God, I've been seeing the same thing, everyone that died in my family, all the symptoms, all the things they normally or usually will experience before the death will come. He said, I've been seeing a young man coming to me to say, you, are, you will die. Then the Lord said to me, the young man was the young man that was killed by his forefathers and they buried him alive. Not just killed, they buried him alive. What happened? 
as I began to pray, watch this very well, everybody. Listen carefully. As I began to pray, the aggrieved person manifested. He said, Dr. Chris Okafor, listen, let me tell you. I'm not a demon. You can't cast me away. I said, what do you mean? He said, if somebody kill your son, will you be happy? I said, no, nobody can kill my son. Not to God be. I said, forget my son. <laughs> yes, sir. Battles of the world. I said, leave my son out of this matter. It's me and you. He said, no, no, no. They can't kill. He said, but I'm asking you, will you be happy? I said, nobody will be happy. He said, his forefathers, I was working for him as a slave. When it was time for me to be freed, after many years to pay me my money, in their room, they dig a grave and pushed me and called me to come and take my money. And they buried me alive. And as I was being buried, I was shouting and I was helpless. Then I said, the same fate I suffer, everybody in the family will suffer it. That no male in their generations to come will go beyond my age. And he said, man of God, I was just turning 42 years old as at that time. He said, so man of God, how are you going to cast me out? I'm not a demon. So, so some people just say, in the name of Jesus, I banned you, I banned you, I banned you. Now imagine when the pastor, imagine when one of the sons of Segu became, uh, of here, became sick. I mean Segu. And they took him and ran to a man of God. The man of God said, hey, in the name of Jesus, I command you, demon, go. There is no demon to command. No demon, sir. No demon. There is no demon to command. But there are powers and there are forces. Yes, sir. The Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, yes. but against principalities and against powers. So when we talk about principalities and powers, not all powers are actually from the devil. Yes, sir. Yes, Papa. Preach it, sir. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, Papa. I will talk about this as we proceed. So, self-imposed curse came into a family. So people began to die. And I said, Lord, what do we do? He said, call for the help of the Holy Spirit. He said, then take the young man, tell him to, that two of you should go back to the town where they buried him alive. And then let mercy. He said, the only thing that can exempt this family from this battle is mercy. Because mercy is the escape from judgment. Yes, sir. Mercy is the escape route. The escape door from judgment then I went into the many many years back over 138 years ago and we began to plead we began to plead and ask the Lord for mercy then I turned to the young man I said their fathers did this they were not there he said the same way my parents did not know where I am. He said they will suffer. Then I be, we are interacting, we are talking. Then I called for mercy. The Lord said, talk to him. The Lord said, talk to him. He said, don't talk to him as a spirit anymore. Talk to him as the human being that was, that was buried alive. He said, talk to him as a human being. Then I asked him, what is your name? He mentioned one, one native name. I can, very long, I can mention. He said, I'm the one. They killed me. They killed me. He said, look at the mark they gave to me in my chest as a slave. As if that was not enough. When it was time for me to be freed, they, they buried me alive. No! No! At the time we shout, no! I said, please, calm down. For the sake of mercy and the blood of Jesus, calm down. I saw him moving back. I will go. I will go. Because of you. I will go. And the man, he moved back, moved back, moved back, moved back, then fell. That was how that young man went beyond 42 years. The last time I was in Namibia, he traveled all the way from Cape Town in South Africa. He said, Papa, I am 48 years now. Power. Are you sure you are hearing me? Yes, Papa. So, these things, they are real. Not real. 
So many of you came from families where such kind of aggrieved personalities are moving around the climb. Why was the people of God agree? What brought this curse? It's as a result of the action of the people of Jericho. The only way the people of Israel needed to break through, I mean to advance their cause of getting to the promised land, was to walk through Jericho. But the people of Jericho refused for no reason. They caused them problem. They caused them stress. And they said, because of this action, I curse your land. And later, two men died when the man came to rebuild it. Imagine when the second one was sick, they took it to a pastor or a bishop who, do, who does not understand the operations and the workings of the spirit. He says, in the name of Jesus, demon, go. Which demon are you asking to go? I rebuke you. Which, who are you rebuking? Which demon? Rebuking Joshua? Which demon? Are you rebuking, are you rebuking Moses reincarnated? Saying, no, 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 it will not work. It will not work, sir. You got to go back and plead with the one who spoke, who is higher than the one who is trying to reverse. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can't reverse what is higher than you. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, Papa. Now, I prove this to you as we begin, as we begin to pray in some minutes from now. Now, watch this, everybody. I tell you, not everybody can deal with things. When you are in a place mm. where you know, you are sure, you see grace, you see power, you see the workings and the rightly dividing of the work and manifestations and power of the Spirit, align yourself to such grace and stay put there. Yes, sir. Align now watch this. Everybody, under the sound of my voice, watch this. I prove this to you. Even though this man lost his two sons, that does not mean the curse was broken. No, not at all. It's another loss as a result of foolishness. Yes, sir. As a result of foolishness. Those two boys, are they supposed to die? No. no. There are suffering you are going through that you are not supposed to suffer. Yes, sir. Not all your suffering that God orchestrated. No. Yes, sir. Ignorance. Like the other day, Job said, Job was saying, he said, God has given to me and he has also taken. No. And somebody who don't understand would think that no God actually gave but it was the devil that took yes sir not God somebody shout amen amen when this curse came the man lost his two sons because he was trying to rebuild what he doesn't understand. The Bible told us it came to pass after this man has lost his two sons, the curse was still not broken. You know why? You know why? You can't just break what you don't know. Yes, sir. There is a way and there is a process. Yes, That's why the Bible said, With wise counsel thou shalt make war. Yes, sir. <laughs> Some people just go to war. Hey, hey, in the name of Jesus, the power of my father's house. What are you waiting for? Yes. You say, I'm waiting for. They kill me. That's why I'm waiting here. They killed me. What are you waiting for? Die? Me. They already killed me. You asked me to die again. That's all the, that's all the agrees with you. Go knock your head. Yes. Give you one headache first. One migraine. You're going to be suffering that one. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. Amen. So watch, the people of Jericho, they are wise. But that man was ignorant. When it was the reign of Elijah, they never approached Elijah to come and break the curse. Because Elijah cannot reverse what was spoken by Moses. No. Moses is a senior prophet. Yes, sir. Moses is a higher prophet. Yes, sir. Moses was in a class of his own. So there is no way you call for commissioner of police to reverse what has been declared by the IG of police. The IG, Inspector General, is the boss. The commissioner is in charge of states. But what the IG says is final. If IG gives order, nobody challenges it. So, so, so Elijah was like a commissioner. And Moses was an IG, oh. Inspector General of the Prophetic. Hey, 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 
power. So the, the people never bothered to go to him. They never bothered. They saw Elijah now. They saw when fire came down. I'm teaching you some things you need to know. Teach me. They saw when Elijah caught fire. If I be a man of God, let fire. Fire came down. About two to three times. They saw all the mighty work of Elijah. How Elijah restored a dead baby back to life. They saw how Elijah made a widow. A Zarephath widow that was on the verge of eating her last meal. How Elijah made the woman a multi-millionaire prosperous. They saw all these grace. But they understand that there is a difference between manifestation and revelation of power. So they didn't go to him. So they were still praying and their answered prayer came in the person of Elijah. And when Elijah was to go, he said, tell me, Elisha, what I must do for you. And Elisha, because some people were praying that somebody who should come to the level of, of, of Joshua or higher than Joshua should come to reverse it. And it had to come with commitment, with some serious hard work. Hard work. So Elisha was guided because some people were praying. And they didn't say, man of God, I want to inherit the ministry. He said, no, sir. He said, Papa, I need nothing from you except the double portion of your spirit, the double portion of your grace. Wow. Elijah reacted. He said, what you have asked for is difficult, even almost impossible. But on one condition, if you see me when I will be taken away, this grace shall be made available. You will get it. That's to say, if you continually be, if you are, con if you, if you don't lose your concentration, you don't lose your focus. You are still committed to me. You follow me the way you are, you started following me. Yes. Your first love still remain intact. He said, on the basis of that, you will get it a time came where serious tests came to that quest he said can you wait for me let me go yonder i said no sir anywhere you go i follow you yeah. again wait for me here i need to go do something here he said no sir as surely as the lord that god liveth anywhere you go i will go anywhere anywhere he said it doesn't matter even if you go to where you make mistake, it doesn't matter. Oh. Your mistake did not attract me. It was your grace that attracted me. Yes, sir. Your glory, it was not your mistake that attracted me. It was your glory that attracted me. Yes. Why not go for what brought you? Look at what brought you. Yes. If the glory brought you, let the glory sustain you. Yes, sir. Pretty papa. Let the glory. Talk about the glory. Yes, sir. That's what brought you. You went to a restaurant to eat, and what you went there to eat is rice. After eating rice, you started asking them how many rats are living in this house. How many cockroaches? Is there snake here? That's not what you went there to do. You went to eat. When you eat, you go. So Elisha said, if you continue, that's why many people can come to the place of grace like this. The enemy takes their focus away from what they came to look for. Very soon, they join Gossipers Association. Incorporated in Nigeria. We can and they start speaking things they don't even know. The moment you do that, that is a structure. The enemy gives you assignment. Because you have had such person as a friend in the church. The following Sunday when you are coming, that person becomes your friend. Now, why is this person your friend in the church? What is the discussion that is the, what is the topic that binds you all together? If he doesn't have to do with God, if he doesn't have to do with business, is something else you are in the wrong, you are in the wrong direction already. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are headed for the journey of the people of Egypt. Mind where you are going to, mind what brought you, yes. mind what you came to do, mind where you are going to. Wrong direction. I hear you, Papa. Can I hear him? Man? Yeah, man. The man said, No, I refuse. One time, the sons of the prophet they came to him. They said, Are you aware that your master will be taken away? He said, Shut up, gossipers. I'm not here to gossip. I know it. I'm following my master. He shunned them. 
Not everybody you see in church becomes your friend. Yes, sir. If their focus is not your focus, it doesn't mean you are their enemy. If their focus is not your focus, you can't say there, there is no way you can say you love somebody and you are going to you are going to America and the person is going to flight. I mean, the person is going to maybe Lesotho. And you say, okay, make her leave America and make her join more, enter more the yarn. You go, you go, yeah, enter Lesotho. You go enter Lesotho. You suffer. I pray for you that you will not lose focus. In the name of Jesus. He said, leave me. I know. Don't distract me. Because they because if you had followed them, really, you know. They would drag him into confusion. Are you sure? Are you sure you are the one? Nobody say you are the follower. They would distract him. He followed his master, and they came to a place. He was the only one that attend attend the practical prophetic class. As they were traveling, probably there was no money. They came to Jordan. He said, "Let Jordan divide." Jordan divided. And the both of them walked through. The first time they would see that practical dimension, the both of them walked through. And as they walked through, all of a sudden, Elijah was raptured alive. He saw him, he saw when the mantle fell. Yes, and they shouted, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Yes. And they saw him no more. Yes. But he went and took the mantle uh -huh. that fell from him. Uh -huh. I came for the mantle and I got the mantle. Yes. I caught the mantle. Sir. What are you here for? You came for the mantle? Uh -huh. Pursue the mantle. Yes, Pursue the mantle. Yes, Refuse to be distracted. Yes, Somebody said, talk to me. Talk to me, Papa. Preach it, sir. See that? He got the mantle. Watch this. Watch this. He got the mantle. On his way back, the river, river Jordan had, had sealed up, joined up again. Then he said, ah, he tried to open Jordan. No way. Jordan divide, Jordan refuse. We know Elijah, but we don't know you. Oh. Then he took the mantle. Listen, you got to be careful. Because you must understand when you, when you come under grace. Be careful how you behave. Yes, you can say, I know God, but there are people God commissioned, and through them you are commissioned. Yes, sir. To talk. To talk, Papa. And you just go there and say, my God, my God, my God. You are not anointed for that dimension. But when the thing becomes difficult, he said, Now, where is the God of Elijah? Elijah showed up and said, Let him go, he's my son. And the marine forces said, Elisha, you should have told us. You are making things difficult for yourself. You have a father with a key, and you are going to a road without a key. All you need to do is to say, Where is the God? You will see, hold on, you will see manifestation. We are. Listen, even Elijah himself understand this. When, when he was with the when he was with the prophets of Baal face to face, when it was his turn to call down fire, he said that they may know you sent me. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Yes, sir. Power. Who is your father? Yes. Who is your father? Can I hear him, somebody? Amen. Hey, Sit down. Sit down. As they saw this guy coming, as soon as he got that mantle in the realm of the spirit. His, his military prophetic uniform was taken away and they gave him another one with another rank of a prophetic field marshal and when he came to Jericho according to 2 Kings chapter 2 if you read from verse number 18 the Bible said again the men of Jericho they came to
to Elisha. Uh -huh. They said to him, as you can see, man of God, the land here, the situation is good. He said, but the water is not and the land is barren. Prophet, can you speak for us? Understand something. They did not go to Elijah, but they met a man who had a double portion of Elijah's spirit. And by implication, he can override because he now had the double portion of a father's spirit. So by the reason of that, he stand in a better prophetic fair advantage and position to overturn and override. As soon as they saw him, he said, I understand. Get me salt and the cruise. He went to the waters uh -huh. and they said, Toss here the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. But before he could overturn it, before he would break the curse, I want to paint a picture here. Uh -huh. As he tried to do that, because everybody who plays a curse, their spirit goes with the curse yes. to enforce it. Because spoken curse is a law, but the spirit behind the curse is what does the enforcing. Yes, sir. The spirit. So as soon as Elijah tried to break the curse, the spirit of Joshua showed up and said, Who are you? What? He showed him his rank. He said, Go ahead. And it came to pass. As soon as he got to the place, he said, From now on, this water is made whole from today. There shall no longer be death nor barrenness. And the Bible said that that. The, the, the water has been made whole up to this day according to the word spoken by Elisha. And I've said this many times that if you go today to Jericho, they produce one of the best fruits of the world yes, in, the, in this world today, now on earth. Because of the, by the reason of this prophetic yes, healing. Everywhere there is cause in your life and in your family, uh -huh. by the reason of this service, uh -huh. I bypass whatever protocol it is yes. or it was that has kept you, uh -huh. and I declare yes. by the God of this altar, yes. you break out from that curse, yes. from the curse of barrenness, yes. from the curse of struggle, yes. from the curse of sudden death, yes. break out and break free. Yes. Power. I said, break out and break free. Amen. That your land that produces nothing uh -huh. will begin to produce something. Amen. The land is healed. Amen. The land is made whole. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No more barrenness. Amen. The yoke is broken. Amen. No more barrenness. Amen. The yoke is broken. Amen. It's broken. Amen. I said, it's broken. Amen. 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 It's it's broken. It's broken. It's broken. It's broken. Power. The land. La terra. So the waters were healed Donc, les, les to this day, yes. according to the saying of Elisha. Yes. Now yes. there is no Elisha anywhere here. Yes. There is Chris Okafor. Yes. According to the sayings yes. of Dr. Chris Okafor, yes. your financial land shall be healed. Yes. Your marital land shall be healed yes. from now. Yes. Your yes. land of yes. destiny yes. shall be healed. Yes. Your family shall be yes. healed. Yes. Your health shall be healed. Yes. Your Finances shall be healed. Yeah. Your business shall be healed. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. After today, uh -huh. I call for the power uh -huh. and the voice. Uh -huh. Enforcing that battle. Uh -huh. Enforcing that premature death. Yeah. Enforcing that curse. Yeah. I command it to break. Power. Let every voice enforcing death, uh -huh. enforcing struggle, uh -huh. enforcing hardship, uh -huh. enforcing poverty, yes. by the power of the Holy Ghost, yes. I command it to be broken. Yes. I command the voice to be silent. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. I prophesy from now you are moving power. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Be seated. So I see. Give me some time. Somebody say, work it. Work it, Papa. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Work it, Papa. Can you talk to me? Some... Work it, Papa. As long as you talk to me, we will work it. Yes, sir. Work Somebody it, say, work it, Papa. Work it, Papa. The man with great revelation. Work it. Now listen. Okay. Listen. Okay. 
the land was made whole. That was the end. Now it was in the same Jericho that a blind Bartimaeus broke the yoke and the cycle of his father's house. Now Jericho is prophetically a place of encounter. Now we have come to Jericho this morning. Every cycle in your family. Now look at me. Two major curses. One was a one had to do with community, national curse, and one had to do with a family curse. The curse that was upon the nation of Jericho, that was a national curse, was broken in the land of Jericho. The curse of blindness that repeats in the family the, re the cycle of repetition of blindness was broken in Jericho now this is the place of encounter we go into the prophetic place of Jericho every cycle in your family that is known and notable you will no longer repeat it anymore the curse is broken power sit down Sit down. Amen. 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 I can't hear your amen. Now remember, I'm going to say, show you three things, then we'll pray. Okay? I'm going to do it very quickly. So the character of the altar, it brings back the same thing that your father suffered, that your mother suffered. The same thing, nothing different. We've seen that in the Abrahamic bloodline. We saw in 2 Kings chapter 13 and verse 14 how anointed Elisha was. The Bible told us after all, he died in his own sickness. The time his own sickness means Akamir. That's 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 Elisha. The time his own sickness is the same sickness the family suffered from. Yes, he could not come out of it. One of the things the enemy will do to you is to blind you not to see. One of the characters of the enemies I discovered by the spirit, I discovered by the spirit, is number one. The Bible, you know, the Bible says something. Hearing, they will not hear. Seeing, they will not see. Lest they be delivered. Now, you know, one of the things the power will do, it can be ministration and teaching going on. You know you, the altar of your father's house will move you. Why people are listening, you you will be strolling. That's the time you want to go and urinate. You will not hear, you must miss it. That's the time you go outside and be making call that has not helped you for over 40 years of your life. Seeing they will not see, hearing they will not hear, lest they be delivered. Because there are things you will hear, you will act on. Yes, sir. So the enemy does not want you to see and hear. And another one, Jesus said, hearing they will hear, but they will not act. He said, because of their tradition, their, their tradition has made the word of God of no effect. They can never hear. This is another character of how the altar play. Now, I want to go to church to be delivered. The power will stop you, try everything to stop you from coming to where you can be delivered. Now, finally, you have come. The enemy still did not give up. They put a structure in place. You can be in the place of deliverance and still not pick anything. Yes, sir. For 38 years, a man was in a place where people were getting healing. But the man was not healed. What he needed was every time the water is troubled, just enter inside. You know his complaint, I had nobody to help me. Excuse me, sir, what are you talking about? If your mission was just come here to be healed, why not stay by the side of the water? Stay by the side of the water. But he will not stay. The altar will push him to go and be gossiping. This water, no like. See that man, protocol, that woman. They, all they will do, they are complaining against everybody, blaming everybody except themselves. Yes, Papa. Everybody they are complaining. They are not working, oh. But anybody that is working, they condemn them. That's why if you come to tell me or report to me, this your worker or this person, people who are working with me, laboring with me, I can't stand you talk at them anyhow. Because you are not there. You are not in the field. Even if they are making mistakes, at least they are making it to be corrected. But you, you are not there. So you don't have right to condemn them. Yes, Papa. Don't have right. Yes. You don't have rights. So every time you try to speak, I block you off. I don't take it. Who are you to condemn them? One time the mother, the mother, the, the relative of Jesus, they came, they, they came and they told Jesus, your mother and your brothers, they are looking for you. Jesus rebuked them. He said, who, am, who, am I, who is my mother? 
who are my brothers he said these ones with me doing the will of god with me is my they are my fathers and they are my brothers this one's with me if you cannot do the work the person is doing don't condemn the person yes sir don't condemn them but rather correct them with love Talk to them with love. So the man went there. This protocol, this usher, this person, that person. Now saw the gossip. Angel will come, trouble the water. Somebody will enter. Oh, again. If I came here for the water to be troubled, I remain here. I died here. Because I will not be distracted. Once the water is troubled, I roll myself inside. I do not need the help of anybody. Yes, I roll myself yes, into the water. Yes, sir. Made it. Yes, sir. Was the man in the place of deliverance? Yes, sir. In the place of his healing? Yes, sir. Did he get healing there? No way. 38 years. If you like, stay here at the chop corn. Stay here and be gossiping somebody. Stay here. Set and go to collect rent on your behalf. No. You see you, your altar send that person that will not be delivered. And you now, your altar now link you with that kind of person. Every Sunday, you must gather. You must do selfie now. That's so. You have never one day after service joined together and say, Let us pray. Who are you gathering yourself with? Mm. Every time, yes, it's going. Another year will start again. The man will say, It's this year. This year is my year. That year will still go. If you don't change your character that the altar has given to you, that's the what he has structured to destroy you. They say the definition of insanity is to do the same thing again and again and expect a different change. Yes, but it's unusual ways of doing things that produces unusual results. Yes, sir. Begin to do things unusually. Somebody say, somebody say, I hear you. I hear you, Papa. Now hear me. Number one character the enemy will put is he comes to deal with your knowledge and you don't have proper understanding of the word of God even when you come for the place of deliverance let me show you for example one of the things the enemy will do I need you if you get this three points now number one you have given your life to Jesus but you have not done restitution it's a character the enemy hides in you for example you were stealing from people before you met Jesus after you met Jesus the things you stole from people that you still kept them in your position your deliverance will be difficult because you are saying Satan has rejected you but you still have his property in your house there got to be restitution Luke chapter 19 very quickly and verse number eight or oh, let's read from seven and eight very quickly let's be fast this number one then i have two more to deal with if either you project it or you, you and read when it. they saw it uh -huh. they all murmured saying that he was going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner mm -hmm. and zacchaeus stood and said unto the lord behold lord the half of my goods i give to the poor and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Listen, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him how many fold? Fourfold. Give me from the Amplified Version. This is called restitution. Young lady, young man, you stole from people but you've given your life to jesus your investment foundation is still on what you stole from people the enemy can be attacking your finances attacking your life attacking everything about you until there is restitution but you can come into church you say yes i'm a new creator all things have passed away all things have become new did you allow also those things? That's why the Jesus said, you don't take a new wine and go to put in an old wine skin. You must do away with it completely. Young lady, you were sponsored by another man's, another man, another woman's husband. Probably through manipulation. 
Sometimes the man was beating his wife because of you. The man was buying for you what his wife cannot even enjoy. And you said you have given your life to Jesus. You still drive that car. The one you got from your immoral lifestyle. Before you give your life to Jesus according to you. You still have that car. You still have that money. You still have that thing. No way. You are still living in Satan's building. Preach it up. One of the dangerous things for you to do is to say, hey, in the name of, in, the, in Satan's kingdom, you, still, you are still holding everything that belongs to him. In Joshua chapter 7, the Bible told us how a small country, a small people of I or AI defeated Israel. And they went back to God and said, why did we suffer such kind of humiliating defeat in our history where we have lost about 36 full soldiers? The Lord said, because you have the accosting. Because of the accosting among you. Joshua chapter 7. Joshua 7, give me verse number 30. Quickly. Read for me if you dare. Thank you, Jesus. It's not up to 30, sir. I mean, read for me from verse 12. From Therefore, verse 12. Uh -huh. The children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turn their backs before their enemies mm -hmm. because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore. Except okay, let's start from verse 10 so that we can get this thing clear. Let's start from verse 10. I want you to listen carefully, everybody. And the Lord said unto Joshua, you are saying, how can you be going for deliverance over the same issue for over 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? You are feeding your demon. You are empowering your altars. Listen to this. Read on. And the Lord said unto Joshua, mm -hmm. Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Mm -hmm. Israel has sinned, mm -hmm. and they have also tra transgressed my covenant, mm -hmm. which I commanded them. Mm -hmm. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, mm -hmm. and have also stolen. The accursed thing in Hebrew word is haram. 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 Haram means forbidding. You have something that is forbidden by God and you are saying God should help you. Go ahead. Let me not waste time. And I've also stolen and dissembled also. Uh -huh. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. What does also mean? You have given your life to Jesus. You still have ring. You say it's for protection. You are foolish. Forgive my language. Except the Lord builds the house. They that builds in the labor in vain. Yes, Except the Lord watches over the city. The sentries and the watchmen, they do so in vain. Yes, sir. How can you be in church? You are seeking for deliverance. And yet, they gave you juju somewhere. It's still in your house, in your shop. The mark, the, the incision they make in your body. You have not made any, any deliberate effort to say, let me go and confess and get myself delivered from this thing. They ask you, you say, no, it's protection. For protection? So if you know that thing can protect you, protect you, why are you coming to God? For deliverance? To help you? Until you put away these things, you're not Just going anywhere. Me yes, shows, uh, and plus. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand Super before now. their enemies. Are you seeing that? Yes, sir. Not because the enemy is powerful, but they have their costings in the midst of them. They could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy the accursed from amongst you. God said, no matter how many places you go for deliverance, you will not get it until you remove the accustings. Haram. Go and do restitution. Go and return them back. Go and throw away that juju. You are not going anywhere. You, we only enjoy temporary deliverance. Tomorrow the battle will be worse. 
Believe in God for your next level. You will see total deliverance. Pack that thing that man bought you, that married man. Pack it. If you can't go to him, take it to a church. And say, this is what I got from my old lifestyle. Now I know Jesus. I give it back. That's what a man who never met Jesus. He said, we give back fourfold everything I've unlawfully and illegally acquired. I will give back fourfold. That was the beginning of his repentance and deliverance. You are in church praying for the same thing, and yet you are, you are not doing restitution. You have to do it. You were in your master's shop learning how to do business. You were stealing from your master. And later that your master settled you. You are wondering why your business is going bad. Go back to your master. Beg him and, and tell him you stole from him. Restitute. If you listen, the devil, God never said at any time the reason why you are in problem is, is because the devil is powerful. Go and restitute. That's the number one thing. Tell your neighbor, say restitution. Restitution. Say it again. Restitution. Number one thing. You are in service today. You came for God to help you, but the gold chain in your neck it was bought by a married man. I know this is not a popular message I'm preaching. Yes, sir. But it's okay. Preach it, Papa. And, and, you are, and you are saying, in the name of every power blocking my marriage, every power blocking my days, I banned you. The devil say, even others, they banned you too, you they banned. My property, there, your neck, you they banned. The truth is that the enemy brings such men into your life to make you think you are in affluence. Meanwhile, what is ahead of you is better. The enemy comes to hold you with that and destroy you for the rest of your life. One strange sickness can come. One strange battles, you will be pursuing it. The enemy will just engage you with that for the rest of your life. He said, except he had destroyed the accursed from among you. Next verse. 13. Quickly. So wake up, sanctify that people, and say, sanctify yourselves. So sanctify means to wash away. Sanctify Take those things away. If you can't, if you, if you, without sanctification, God cannot come. After they did this, after they carried all out all this, they went back to the same people, slaughtered all of them, including their king. No one person of the people of I escaped. Why? God left them because they were holding and the enemy too is using their costing against you he said you cannot be delivered my property is in your body that's number one thing you tell yourself that from today i repent you go back home pack all those things take it to a church if you cannot go to the man take it to a church if you cannot go to that your master take it to a church and say god i did this in foolishness if not you will be suffering every year not your power not the altar you empower the altar to fight you i said number one thing is restitution number two you must understand this self-imposed curse how people put curses on themselves without knowing it there are people what they are dealing with is what they brought to themselves and god cannot take it away because god didn't bring it you are the one that brought it yes you got to remove it for example in matthew chapter 27 verse 20 let's say something do you know there are people look at me everybody there are people because they are going through some kind of pressure they say i wish i die have you heard that before yes sir because of normal problem people go through maybe you are being thrown or you are being accused or somebody humiliates you it's normal and you say i feel like dying you say i rather die life and death they are in the power of the tongue yes sir what do you what did you invite into your life i rather die Every day people do this. How is business today? We are patching. You invited the spirit of patch patch in your business. And you're saying God prosper you. Come, let's go to the word of God. Verse 20. 
But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barnabas and they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. 21, just be fast, be fast with me. The governor answered and said unto them, whether of the, of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. 22, Pilate said unto them, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. 23, and the governor said, why, why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. Another translation said, they cried the more and said, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he could, when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to eat, 25. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our children. His blood be upon us and our children. Some of these people are young men and women who don't have children yet. Now look at this. These are Jewish people. Many, many years later, the Holocaust, the killing and destruction of the Jewish people by Adolf Hitler took place. About 6 million Jewish people were slaughtered because let the blood of this innocent, of course there is a consequence. There are consequences. Let the blood, many years later, Many years later, Jewish people died. This were a generation of the people that said, Let the blood be upon us. Six million people. So nothing just happened. The pregnancy was delivered. The day they said, Let the blood be upon us and our children. Let Jesus be crucified. They put a curse on themselves, self imposed curses. You do something, and they say, who do this thing? Who, I mean, who did this thing? You still lie. If Namidwa, let's thunder fire me. If Namidwa, make it no better for me. You know how many people that are suffering today that it will never be better for her? You did something, yet you were still lying. You came before God, you still lied. You came before a prophet, you still lied. That time you stole something. You say, if let me do this, thing, make it no better for me. Your future was interfered with. Your future was actually what you interfered with. Yes, sir. I'll show you something in Genesis. Give me Genesis chapter 31. Give me verse 30. You, you have to see how these things work. I mean, Genesis 30. Give me verse 30. For what you had before I came was little. Mm -hmm. And it has increased to a great amount. Mm -hmm. The Lord has blessed, the Lord has blessed you since my coming. And now, when shall, I, when shall I also provide for my own house? Thirty-one. So he said, "What shall I give you?" And Jacob said, "You shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep your flock. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep, and all the brown ones among the lamb, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and these shall be my wages. Mm -hmm. So my righteousness will answer for me in time to come, when the subject of my wages comes before you. Okay, this is the bone of contention, but let us go to the main matter, chapter 31 now. Chapter 31. chapter 31. This is where the whole battle why uh, Laban left. Go to chapter 31 and verse 30 quickly. And now, thou, though thou would need be gone, because thou saw longest after thy father's house, mm -hmm. yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, because I was afraid. 
For I said peradventure, thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me. Mm -hmm. With whomsoever thou findest thy God, let him not leave. It's Bef okay. It's okay. With whomsoever thou findest thy God, let him not leave. Before our brethren, descend thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. She sat upon the ghost of his father, covered it. Next verse. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the two maid servants. Into the two maid servants' tent. But they found them not. Then went he out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Uh huh. Now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camels, in the camels' furniture, and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but found, found them not. Uh huh. Quickly. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my Lord, that I cannot rise up before thee. For the custom of women is upon me. And, the, and he searched, but found not the image. The custom of the women, another translation says the manner of the women. That's to say she has a monthly visitor with her. She's talking here about that thing that visits women every month. That's what, she, that's what she's talking about. Now, you know what Jacob said? Jacob was very sure that nobody in his household had the stolen gods, the stolen idol. And Jacob said, anyone that stole your idol, let that one die. It's a curse. Yes, sir. And Rachel heard it and still sat on it. And when the father came from Leah's tent, entered to the tent of the servant, entered into the tent of Rachel, and said, Rachel, can you get up? She said, Papa, I'm under the, the manner of women is upon me. I cannot stand. Your this thing is not here. Meanwhile, she lied. But there is a curse. Self-imposed curse. And the Bible told us later, as Rachel was giving birth, because the curse it's upon her it was not reversed how people die without knowing they are the cause of their problem how people suffer without knowing they are the cause of their suffering and at that moment as she was giving birth the pain was so much the sorrow was so much and she was about to die and the midwife tried to sustain her they, they, they tried to put her together and they said he's a boy what shall you call the boy and they said she said to them call the boy benoni for in bitterness and in pain i brought him forth and then jacob came in immediately at that point in time rachel had given up the ghost and rachel said what name did she call call him and he said benoni he took him and said no his name shall not be benoni his name shall be benjamin which means the right hand of the father now the reason why rachel died it was not devil there was a curse she lied under the curse and she died yes sir. stand to your feet everybody Self-imposed curses. Are you not the one that went to that witch doctor and said this and that and that? You have given your life to Jesus. Have you destroyed that thing? No. We have to come before the searchlight and see how these things operate. Because this is what the enemy we keep using against you until they destroy you. But I want to pray for somebody. Let mercy speak for you. Two things we're going to do. Number one, you will go back after today and we'll pray it in prayer. You will say, Lord, anything that I've taken that is not mine or anything I've illegally acquired, I make a restitution in truth and the spirit. I don't want the property of the devil with me anymore. Let the person die. People don't understand this thing. Now, the other day, in Genesis, I think, in chapter 27, the Bible showed us, the Bible showed us something. 
how Jacob had taken the blessings of his brother through the assistance of the mother. But remember, why they were preparing for that? In preparation to go to meet the old man to get the blessing, Jacob reminded the mother. She said, Mama, you know this thing I'm doing. The day Papa discover, you know the consequences of this is death. You know what the mother said? He said, Let your cause be upon me. Now, watch this. When Jacob, when God had prospered Jacob, he became prosperous. The mother was not there to enjoy it because the consequences of what she has done jacob would have died esau would have killed jacob if esau did not kill jacob laban would have killed him but the cause that was supposed to kill him the mother got him exempted and took the cause and why jacob was coming back the mother had already died may you not die at the time of the greatness of your children in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Understand what, 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 what we're dealing with. Jacob himself said, I'm, even with this, I'm full of trouble. Everywhere I go is battle. Everywhere I prosper is battle. They must pursue me to kill me. When I took the blessing, his brother Esau wanted to kill him in the house of Laban. Laban almost killed him that night until God showed up and said, don't touch him. That was the only saving grace for him. But you see, this guy did something. When it was clear to him that he had to go back to his brother, the Bible told us that his brother, Esau, when he heard of his coming, got about 300 to 400 soldiers ready. The guy was ready to take his pound of flesh. He was ready to take back what the brother took from him. He was spoiling for war. And Jacob, the Bible said, Jacob was so afraid. Then he said to his wife, his sons, his sons and daughters, his, fils, his, fils, his servants, serviteurs, all his wealth, tout, he put them ahead of him. He said, go with it. Everyone, excuse me. Allez. They went ahead of him. He said, I want to be alone. You must come to the time where you will take all those things out of your life. You must take all those rest. You must restitute back for you to have encounter with God. If you don't take those things away, it will be difficult. You might come to church and manifest and still be in the same problem. You must take those things away. He said, put their castings away. And it, it was then, that night, he had an encounter with an angel of Elohim because he put those things away. Many years in his life, he never had a encounter with the angel. But when he put those things away, including the things he got illegally, including the ill-gotten wealth, all those things, he put them out and said, let me encounter God for myself. That night, the angel came. That is why the angel never came. Even when God will come, to save him because of covenant of his father's house. God will not come to him. God will still go to the enemy that wants to kill him. God said, there is something with this guy, even though I will be saving him from afar, but I will not be part of his life. So when he puts those things away, that night, God came. And the person of the angel, watch this everybody. Well, I'm running up here. When the angel came, the angel was passing. He held the angel. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Genesis chapter 32. Give me from verse 26 very quickly. I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said, let me go. For the day break it. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. So your problem is not deliverance. Your problem, there is something, a name of what you brought that is tied to you, that is misrepresenting you in the spirit. What is your name? He said, sir, my name is Jacob. He said, that is the problem. In the, in the, in the, in the chronicles, 
And in the book of remembrance of the prophetic where blessings are tied by spirit and connected by names. He said the name that is tied to your blessing is not Jacob, it's Israel. 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 And he said what you need is change of name. You need change of life. You need change of lifestyle. You need change of character. You can't say you are a child of God. Every night you are going to, you, every now and then you are going to, you are going to, are going to nightclub. Smoking where people are smoking, drinking, and dancing to all the worldly music. And then we come, you will suffer. Because what God gave to you is what you carry to wear in the place of defilement all the time. And you are not still ashamed of the kind of life you live. You will still post those kind of things. Maybe in your, in your, in your social media pages. Says your body is the temple of God. Do you know there are places you should not be? You should never be found as a child of God. There are things that will never come around you as a child of God. And God said, except you take their castings away from you, I will never be with you anymore. You live all kinds of such life. And forgetting, forgetting their implication. And forget it that one day, maybe you as a young lady, a man will want to come to you to marry you. And the man has friend, has, has relative. And they will go back. They will pick one of those things and say, is this lady that is a public prostitute you want to marry? You might not truly be a, pro a public prostitute, but the image you have projected and the kind of lifestyle and places you have visited does not make you different. Yes, sir. Preach it, sir. You know what you, you know you know what you call it you say it's fun fun we turn to son son will beat you you will see suffering mind what you do because your today's life is is report card tomorrow yes yeah it's report card tomorrow people are seeing you people are seeing the things you do they are seeing the things that you post that you are so proud because anything you you are you you post with pride you are like saying this is who i am it doesn't matter it will matter when it matters most that's when it will matter they say your name need to be changed how many of you here this morning needs this change of character that character is what the altar is using against you how many of you here need change of attitude how many of you here need change that restitution should happen so that god himself will come in and take out that enemy he said from today you will must change your name he said your name shall no longer be called jacob your name shall be called israel every time you hear l in the bible it means god coming to involve in something when you hear el shaddai elohim is god himself getting involved l means god el l israel means prince El means the prince of God. Israel means the prince of God. Israel. 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 So sometimes we pronounce it, I call it Israel. No, it's combination of two names. Israel. Israel means a prince. El means God. Israel means the prince of God. Israel you are a prince of god you are a princess of god but there is a character that can make god come and your name cannot be changed lift up your hands wherever you are i have made you too small in my eyes oh lord forgive me I have building in the land that you were unable to help me, but now, oh Lord, I see my wrong in my heart, 
J'étais ignorant depuis ce temps-là. Now it's clearer to me. Maintenant, c'est clair pour moi. I want to take away the accustings from my life. Je veux enlever les choses. Je veux vraiment vous suivre. Je veux vraiment vous suivre. I want to see your glory. Je veux voir votre gloire. I want to see your power. Je veux voir votre puissance, Seigneur. I want to encounter you for myself. Je veux vous rencontrer moi-même. Lift up your hand. Levez la main. Two set of people. I will be praying for. You're going to come out of this altar. You say, God. Devient Seigneur. I am part of this. It affected me. Là, ça m'a dérangé. Now I understand the implication of what I did in my days of foolishness. You say, God, I want to do restitution. Ignorance. Seigneur, il veut faire la restitution. Luke 198, I will pay Luke back fourfold. Whatever I've taken that is not right, that is ungodly, I, I restitute back. You will leave your seat and come out to this place quickly. We're going to pray and get the devil off your back and get the enemy off your back very quickly. If you hear, lift up your hand. Quickly. Come in. I want you to walk out very quickly. I am your own. Very quickly. Till the day you will come. You say I am here. Listen. You, you say I am here. But I've taken things. I've done things. Then si that il a fait des choses. I'm not proud of. Il, but Lord, I am fier de ces choses là au Seigneur et j'en restitue ces choses là. Except you take away the accusation from us. Si vous ne prenez les choses maudites. You want to restitute back. Vous voulez faire la restitution en Run out tour. to this place. Courez rapidement vers cette place. Vous voulez pleurer en Dieu. And as you are coming, all, as you are coming, aussi, you want to repent and you truly want to restitute. Vous voulez faire la restitution. Vous vraiment la restitution. As you come on Sunday when you are coming, you, you say, God, I am, I am repenting. 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 I am On Sunday, as you come out to say, God, I repent. On Sunday, when you are called, you tell God also on Sunday, I'm bringing it either here or any place. I'm restituting, I'm restituting, I'm returning it back. And so the, the second people, you are here, you went to a witch doctor, and you still have the charm that native doctor gave to you. Or that thing that spiritualist gave to you, you still have it in your possession. Come forward to this place quickly. Ah, I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your own.
De la même moi. Say Lord, Dis Seigneur, Lord, thank you, merci thank you for this opportunity, for this opportunity to open my eyes, to open my eyes, to, open my eyes, to make me see. Pour to me voir. Now you can imagine, Lord, just, you, you can see how many, how many you are. You can imagine the battles you've been going through. You can imagine how you have been praying, and you can imagine with all the intervention. Things are still not looking up the way they are. Say thank you. Thank you. For this day. For this day. For this day. Lord, Seigneur, Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry. I didn't know better before now. I didn't know better before now. now. But now. But now I understand. I understand. I know better. I know better. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. I repent truly. I repent truly. And today, any property of the devil, any property of the devil, in my possession, in my possession, I give it out. I give it out. I release it. I release it. And I release the devil from my life. And I release the devil from my life. From today. From today. I will never. I will never keep the devil in my life. Keep the devil in my life by keeping his property. By keeping his property, I repent. I repent. I am coming back here. I am coming back here on Sunday to give back to the devil. To give back to the devil. What? What? What belongs to him? What belongs to him? That is in my possession. I release it. I release it. That Satan, Satan should let me go. Let me go. Amen. 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 Now I pray for you. I pray for you. I want you, every one of you that came out to be on fasting and prayer from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Are you hearing me? Jeudi, vendredi, from at least 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Le mercredi, and say, God, vendredi, I break away the structure of the enemy in my life and I release what belongs to the devil that is in my possession. Devil, take your hands off me. Stay in prayer. On Sunday, I'm going to pray for all of you and anoint you. It's going to be a powerful deliverance. Il est très puissant. Et vous voyez comment votre vie va tourner.